8 a.m. I walk over from the dorms into the office. And then the first thing that I do is check the wind forecast. And the reason why we're doing this is because we have to go all around the island, dive super deep, like 130 feet. The conditions have to be perfect, so no wind, no swell, no current. And so when I check the weather forecast, I'm basically making sure that we're not gonna be going out in conditions that could be dangerous. The first step is you put your buoyancy compensator onto your tank, and then you put your regulator, which is your breathing device, on. And those two pieces make up the scuba equipment set. And making sure that your equipment is working properly just ensures that you'll have a safe and enjoyable dive. After I get all my stuff ready, me and my boss, Randy, drive out to wherever spot we're gonna be doing work for that day. If we're doing work in the lagoon, it's normally at this place called Ava Iti, which at its deepest point is a whopping seven feet. After we get to our spot, we go and snorkel instead. And so you can be out for three or four hours at any given time. So we swim along on the surface and then when we want to go down, we hold our breaths, dive down, do whatever work we need to, and then you pop back up and you clear your snorkel. I switch at some point from snorkel to scuba. Being on snorkel is pretty inefficient. You only get like 30 seconds max at any one time. So when we know that we're gonna be down there for a long time, we switch over to scuba. The reason that we're in Ava'idi is we're looking at coral bleaching as a result of warming ocean temperatures. And so my boss is surveying these like small corals that have been bleached this year because the water temperatures got really, really hot. Some of them are coming back, a lot of them are dying. And so she's recording which ones are coming back and which ones aren't. I would get to see every part of the island at every depth. And seeing stuff at like six feet in the lagoon is totally different than being like 130 feet down where there's just, you know, super strong currents and it's just wide open. There's, it's a desert. There's nothing around you. There's no life. There's no fish, no coral. It's just sand and wide open blue water. That was probably my favorite part of the summer was just going around and seeing cool stuff on my way to collect the instruments. Basically how it breaks down is we get back and we have our really heavy scuba tanks and I wash them all down, get all the salt water off of them. You bring it into the compressor and the first thing you do is take off the old tanks. And to do that, you have to release the pressure on them because it forms a vacuum seal. And as long as that seal is there and it's under pressure, no matter how hard you twist, you're not gonna get it off. It's, it's gonna be like on there. So you vent all the air, you put the new ones back on, screw them closed, turn on the air so that it pressurizes the system, and then you can start filling. I walk over with this buoy that's covered in algae and I start scrubbing. And there's no real purpose to me scrubbing this buoy other than to get it clean so that we can store it. But I do it and I do it with pleasure. And I'd like to think I've really gained valuable skills as a buoy scrubber this summer. The instrument that I'm cleaning is a SBE39. It's a temperature sensor. It's filthy when we pull it out of the ocean. It's got coral growing in it, it's got algae on it, and it has to be pristine before we download it and bring it into the office. And so it's my job to make this thing sparkling. How do you do it? They gave me like this bottle of vinegar that's like this big, and a toothbrush. And it's not designed to be a torture exercise, even though it might feel like it. It's just 
the sensor itself is really delicate and so I have to be really careful scrubbing around it, which is why I can only use a toothbrush that has soft bristles. Programming them is actually pretty easy. We have these cables on the wall. So when I bring the instruments in, I just grab the cables. I open the instrument up with a wrench. And then plug all the cables in, plug it into the computer. And there's a couple commands that I have to do. And then it starts downloading and it takes a really long time, like probably about half an hour. 